Hello, my name is Jenny Homewood and I am the Complementary Therapy Manager at St Helena Hospice. I'm going to share with you um, during this Dying Matters Week the benefits of compassionate and therapeutic touch at the end of life. I've put together a small presentation that includes a video instruction on massage of the hands and so I hope that you find this beneficial. So welcome to this presentation. As I said, we're going to look at the benefits of providing compassionate and therapeutic touch at the end of somebody's life. To do this, I'm going to look at generally the power of touch itself, the sense of touch, the power of touch, and what that can bring and what it means to us. I'm going to introduce you to some Namaste care principles, which are used at end of life care, and the benefits of understanding some of the sensory aspects of that. And then, as I said, there will be a hand and foot massage instruction video for you to follow and for you to learn. So the need for touch is basically a human condition. All people need human touch. It's a biological need that we have from the start of life right to the end of life. Touch is often referred to as the mind, body, soul connection. It affects us physically, but also it can affect us emotionally. And research has shown that touch is vital for our health, for our well-being and for our happiness. Touch is intuitive to humanity and it's one of our five senses. It's very powerful and it's without touch as that little diagram and picture shows that we can feel very disconnected and I think that's possibly one of the things that a lot of people have struggled with during lockdown and through the restrictions that we've had recently. So the benefits of bringing what I would call compassionate or therapeutic touch or touch with a therapeutic um, end is that it will ease emotional distress. So when somebody is feeling very distressed, very agitated, um, upset, a therapeutic touch, a gentle touch will bring some ease to that distress. One of the things that happens in the body is there's uh, a chemical that's released from the brain that's called oxytocin. And oxytocin is the chemical that lowers stress and anxiety. But one of the main things that oxytocin does is it gives us feelings of safety and trust and feeling loved. Gentle loving touch decreases pain and decreases agitation. Agitation is when somebody can't settle. So bringing in some gentle touch can really help with that. Touch deprivation at the end of life can cause distress. And it's not that people want to cause distress, but often the caregiver, which could be a family member, it could be a friend, can get very worried and very anxious about providing an effective touch. One of the common things that people will say to me is, I, I don't want to hurt my loved one. I don't want anything to do to make it worse. But I think what we need to understand is that very gentle touch is going to be far more effective and far more um, loving than not giving any touch at all. And research has shown that the touch that we can give, that gentle touch, the hand on hand, gentle stroking, soothing, can communicate care and support and love and compassion to the person. And I think it also brings a connection in as well. When somebody is doing that and, and, and they know that the communication is showing love and showing care, it can be really powerful. And I think one of the things we often um, don't realise is that doing that and being there in that moment does communicate presence and presence is very powerful. But also it's going to bring a connection between those that are receiving the touch and those that are giving the touch. And touch um, that we give doesn't require much skill. Anybody can provide a gentle touch. And the image of the feather to me is that our skin is so sensitive that we often can um, just pick up the gentle touch that we get just with a feather on our hand. Sometimes some people might find that quite sort of tickly, but the touch that we bring needs to sort of be deliberate in the sense that we don't want to tickle and cause irritation, but it's 
communicating that gentleness throughout. And I really like this quote, whenever we reach out with love and compassion to touch another life, our contact makes the burden a little lighter and the pain a little more bearable. The human touch delivers encouragement to the discouraged and hope to the hopeless. I'm going to talk a little bit about Namaste Care Principles. Namaste Care is a program that's um, carried out in care homes um, for people who are facing end of life and particularly with people with dementia um, problems as well. And it's become a recognized uh, principle that people can apply as just the little picture there is of a book that you can get that explains it in a lot more detail. But there's some really good principles out of this um, care program that I think that we can look at and sort of um, understand and bring into this therapeutic touch at end of life. Now the word namaste is a Hindu greeting which means to honour the spirit within which is, I think is a really really wonderful um, way of describing about reaching somebody. It's what we call a person-centered approach. And that means that the approach is given with empathy. It's given with respect and dignity for the person, considering their comfort, being intuitive to what you think they may need and responding to it in a flexible and sensitive way to the individual. The other thing is that in the Namaste Care program is what we want to create around the person is a calm, peaceful and familiar environment. And sometimes that's easy to do if somebody's at home, but sometimes it can be quite difficult to um, create that or think about how to create that possibly if they're in, in a place where they're not at home and it's unfamiliar. So it's always good to maybe think about some soft lighting um, not always have bright light you can get those little lamp um, salt lamps which are really good maybe think about the sound surrounding that person they might have some favorite music or you just want to play some gentle music in the background but also think about the sort of sounds of the family that they're familiar with or if they love nature bird song those kind of things Another thing to think about the environment is maybe to introduce some aroma, some essential oils like lavender, like chamomile. Sometimes you can get these little diffusers that will just let the, the lavender and the chamomile essential oil diffuse into the air. You can also nowadays get little lavender pillow sprays and they sometimes call it sleep spray. And that's really nice if you can just spray that onto some of the blankets or the pillows that they may have over them. Thinking about the familiar, maybe some photos or some memory boxes with things that they like um, and, and bringing in the comfort. So some warm, soft blankets and pillows are really important. And one of the main aspects of Namaste Care is to bring in what we call gentle hand and foot massage, but the way of introducing some really gentle touch that's very therapeutic and compassionate, just applying some cream onto somebody's skin, even brushing their hair, um, putting a flannel on their face, anything like that which communicates that loving touch is a really um, big part of the Namaste Care. And I think it's something to think about when we're bringing in some therapeutic touch at the end of life. So massage for most of us, if we think about wanting to have a massage, it's because we want to go and get some relaxation. But massage for palliative and end of life care is very different. And we're going to look about how we're going to make those adaptations to to make it really therapeutic and compassionate. Massage is a complementary therapy and it uses a series of hands on strokes. Um, which has a suitable product, generally an oil or a cream. And the principle behind massage is to induce relaxation. Touch is much lighter. We use a very slow and a very gentle pace to calm and to soothe. Um, compassion and patience are the main tools in doing this type of massage. So it's really taking your time. It's being sensitive to the person that you're massaging and not forgetting warm hands and warm heart when we're doing this. Simply being there and holding a person's hand, 
that kind of presence and that kind of touch can soothe anxiety and can increase comfort to the person. It will bring you closer together and in that will create some memorable moments that you will have that will last you for your lifetime. The aim then is to remember that we are to relax, to still the mind, to bring about a sense of well-being and to bring that connection. So we're going to just talk about the hand and foot massage, which is a video that's going to follow this slide. And in this massage video, we talk about using the M technique. Now, the M technique was a specific type of massage that was developed by Dr. Jane Buckle. And I popped her, her web address in there. Now, Dr. Jane Buckle registered this method of structured touch and was able to do some research behind it. And it's suitable for those who are fragile, who are very unwell or dying. The M technique is useful for when the giver, the person going to provide the massage, is not trained in massage. Therefore, anybody can learn this and anybody can receive this. The moves are very slow. They're very gentle. We talk about a pressure of three. So say naught is nothing or just very, very light. It's, it's a more slightly, not firmer, but more deliberate pressure. I often say if you're thinking about stroking a small child, sort of so that they can feel that it's to soothe and it's repetitive and again we use the number three however I often find that with somebody who's quite agitated or may need a little bit more time to settle you you're not sort of don't have to just do the three you can do more moves as is required so be intuitive connect with what you feel the person might might want Use a product that the person uses. So if they have a lovely hand cream or a foot cream, you can use that. But if you are going to use something that they haven't used before, something you like, just make sure that they don't have any allergies to that product. And also just be sensitive to avoid any areas where there may be some bruising or it might be quite painful in an area, then just either just very, very lightly just go over that or avoid that area completely. So we're going to have a look at the video and I hope that you find this instructional and, and hopefully it will give you some ideas on how you can bring that therapeutic touch to the person that you're with at the end of their life.
hope you found that really helpful to have a look at. It's easy to learn. You can adapt it to um, your, your own um, way of understanding it. But that's the M technique in essence. But it's just to introduce to you how important it is that touch is not something that we're afraid to do at the end of somebody's life, that it's really important and that will communicate compassion, it will communicate connection. And as I say, the most important is building those memorable memories that you will have forever, that you were there and able to bring that. So I hope you found that really helpful. Thank you.